Well, first and foremost, you know, I, not for me, but, but most people love to see beautiful people. And when beautiful people <laughs> do things that might be deemed to be naughty, they love to follow it. They love to live vicariously through them. And also, I think that people love to learn things. And through the Casey Anthony case, Amanda Knox, um, all these cases, we learned. We learned about the criminal justice system. You and I learned together over the year. We learned that truth isn't what necessarily is sought after in the criminal justice system. What it is about is the burden of proof and whether prosecutors can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. So it's about learning things. And through these cases, we learned an awful lot. Well, Mark, I appreciate that. And that is, of course, what my goal is in following these cases. But as I recall, you knew that, but educated me about that and gave me GI problems as a result. Isn't, isn't that how it went down? Well, well, well listen, I, I always carry this when I'm on your show just in case. Thank you. Many of the stories Thank you. Thank you, make Mark. us both sick, Drew. Yeah. I appreciate that. But, okay, so women at the center of these stories. And if you look at human history, women have always had a special place for our envy and aggression. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly women that have used their sexuality or beauty in any way, we are, as a society, and I mean human, through human history, not just Western society, we can be ruthless. Is this that same impulse again that we're acting out here through these cases that get high profile and in the justice system, Lisa? Well, you know, it could be. I, I call these some of these cases missing pretty white women's stories, and I, I don't mean that uh, in any kind of hostile way to these poor victims who are missing, but I think our media misses a lot of the big stories involving people of color, boys, people who are not attractive, and it's partly the media's fault and it's partly the consumer's fault because people don't tend to watch or read stories about those people, well, but they're, they're just as important, those but, stories, But right? of course the media wouldn't... Um, wouldn't do this if the consumer would respond to it right. differently, so, right? So it's that, really about us as consumers. In fact, that's what I wrote my book about, is trying to get people as consumers to click and log on and watch programs that have kind of the serious fare that cover, for example, stories of missing Latino children, uh, which very rarely get covered, even though many of them are missing on a daily basis. They just don't get covered. And they don't get the, the kind of sweeping coverage these stories get day to day to day, you know, 24-7 coverage. And Robin Gardner is a perfect example of that. There's so much coverage of this beautiful blonde woman. She disappeared, and people are so outraged that it has hasn't been solved, but there are so many missing people out there, children, women, men, on a daily basis that never get mentioned, that people never know about. It's a very common occurrence. Now, I, while I agree 100% with you guys, I'm going to ask you to scratch even a little deeper, which is what I was asking for, which is what is about us and all of us mm -hmm. that a young woman, a pretty young woman, and again, remember all these stories, there was a lot of question about their sexuality and their behavior and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why are we, and, and look what we do to the Lindsay Lohans of the world, by the way. Mm -hmm. Why are we ruthless mm -hmm. in tearing these people down? Think about it. We right. say, beware if you're one of those people. There's Casey Anthony, for right. instance. It, it, well, we, as a society, and I, and I don't mean, I mean, for, I always hate when people say as a society. Us, oh, as people, we have, we have a special aggression for that. No? Well, and I talk about this as well in my book. It's called the halo effect. And you know about the halo effect, which is essentially we tend to believe that beautiful people are good people. Children as young as two or three years old, when they're shown a picture of a beautiful woman, they think it. she's nice. They mm -hmm. think she's honest. They think she's a credible person, right? Of course, looks tell us nothing about what a person is like on the inside, but we all tend to assume that. Many of us, so, even so if we don't that, think we do, is it we that, do. Is that disappointment and that they let us down? And then if somebody like Casey Anthony them? turns out, to look like somebody who killed her daughter. She's now been acquitted of that. I mean, we're just shocked because it doesn't correspond with what we assume based on what somebody looks like. And it's not just beauty, it's women too. We hold women to a different standard. We, we women do or men do? Both. Both do, okay. Both men and women. You know, with something that a woman does, oh, that's salacious. Whereas a guy does it, ah, it's just a guy, you know, boys will be boys. Right. And honestly, the percentage of women defendants is much lower than men. So when there's a woman who's caught doing something bad, we all are riveted by it. Mark, do you want to ring in on this discussion? Yeah, I think that we look at a Casey Anthony or, or the latest stories we've been covering like well, wait a second, that seems inconsistent with what we were looking at in terms of the shell that God gave that person. And I don't know, is that judgmental? I think so. Um, but that's just, I don't know, I think that that's how we've been, we've been raised somehow, to look at, at a shell and make a determination and be judgmental. And I think a lot of people avoid looking at their own defects in character because they're pointing right. their finger at somebody else and they're judging them. Yes. And I think that perhaps that's I think not that, that uh, is, the strongest I, choice. Mark, I think, I, I, while I agree with everything this panel has said so far, I think you're onto something there. I think we like elevating people mm -hmm. and then we like tearing them down mm -hmm. because it makes us galvanize together as a group. 
against that one and makes us feel better about our own shortcomings. I agree with you. Now, Amanda Knotts moved to her. She spent more than three years in an Italian jail, was initially convicted of murdering her roommate, Meredith Kircher. But in October, a jury overturned her conviction and she flew home. Thank you to everyone who's believed in me, who's defended me, who's supported my family. Now, I, I personally think that was a miscarriage of justice, but the question I have for all three of you is, why do you think there was such a different perception of her, Amanda, by the European media as, a pair, as opposed to the American media? Anybody want to ring in on that? Well, she was an outsider there. She was easy, a target to vilify. They had these pictures of her kissing her boyfriend right after, which looked very strange. Mm -hmm. And they wanted somebody to go after. They wanted somebody they could attack and, and go after in the media with this media frenzy. By the time she came here to America, she'd been vindicated. And we all related to her as one of our own. This was, but for the grace of God, our daughter, or our son, right. who might be abroad and get caught and up in something let me, like this. Let me this. propose something else. Maybe, again, her again, her sexual behaviors were what were sort of right. being used and justified as a reason we can't trust this crazy right. woman. Right. And here, that was much more normative behavior. That's right. And you know what else? Villains are inherently more interesting. Villains sell tabloids. And the tabloids in Europe are huge, even mm. bigger than the tabloids here, especially in the UK, right, where the victim yep. was from. Right. So if we make her out to be a villain, she's this evil American with a sweet face who's engaged in these disgusting, you know, sexual acts and murder, ultimately, it's going to sell more papers. And I think that's ultimately, Drew. it's all about economics. Follow the money, Drew. <laughs> Mark, last comment. Go ahead. I, I want to ring in on this. Number one, a baby wasn't killed, and that's a good thing yeah. when you're a defendant. Obviously, it worked against yeah. Casey. But the other thing is, all the stuff that they had on Casey pre-trial that we saw, there was most of us who had condemned her before the trial ever began. Not the same thing with Amanda Knox. Yes, you guys. Thank you.